Hey guys, it's Rishi once again, and today we're back with something slightly different. Today we're going to be focusing on the 11 plus preparation, and in particular the Dulwich College Mathematics Paper A. Now, Dulwich College is an independent day and boarding school for boys in Dulwich, London, and it's a member of the Eaton Group and maintains an excellent reputation for its wealth of supporting activities and successes. Now, in today's video, I will be going through uh, a paper, going through each individual question, so you can feel free to see exactly how I'm attempting these questions, giving you the tips and tricks to maximize the chances of you getting full marks. So just to give you a bit more information, the Dulwich 11 plus exam date for this year's cohort is 14th of December, 2022. The exam type or the exam board they follow is the CAT4, which is again, your cognitive abilities test. Alongside that, you will also have the English and mathematics papers. Now the CAT4 test aims to assess developed abilities uh, via modules testing your verbal reasoning, your non-verbal, uh, spatial and quantitative reasoning. Uh, we then have our English paper, which examines the comprehension and writing skills, whilst the maths paper tests problem solving abilities and arithmetic skills. Again, in terms of the pass mark, they do advise to aim for 85% plus in their online practice tests but we want to make sure that we are working smart as well as working hard to maximize our chances. So just like all of the other videos that I've gone through on our channel, uh, feel free to pause the video at any point, attempt the question and then press play to see me go through the solutions. I'll be supporting you throughout the entire 11 plus journey. So if you have any questions or any comments, feel free to comment below. So without further ado, let's go ahead and let's get started. Amazing. So question number one, 546 plus 287. So again, I'm going to dive in with the column method right away. We'll have 546 plus 287. We know six and seven gives us 13. So we put three there and one we carry. Four and eight gives us 12 plus the one gives us 13. So I cross that one out. And then five and two is seven, plus the one that we were carrying gives us eight. And there we are, 833. Okay, over to question two. We've got 546 minus 287. So again, we'll go for the column method here. And remember, we always start from the right-hand side. In this case, we cannot do six take away seven. So we have to borrow from the four. So over here, the four we cross out and becomes a three, and then the six becomes a 16. We then have 16 take away seven, which gives us nine. And then over to the tens position. Again, we can't do three take away eight. So we cross out the five, that becomes a four, and one goes in front of the three, which makes it a 13. We then have 13 take away eight, which gives us five. And then four takeaway two gives us two. So our answer is 259. So I hope those two questions were clear. Let's now move over to question three. Where we have 546 times by four. Let's go with our column method. So we have six times four, which is 24. Carry the two. Four times four is 16, plus two is 18. 5 times 4 is 20, plus the 1, which is 21. So all in all, we have 2,184. Okay, over to question 4. 2,184 divided by 7. So this is where we use our bus stop method. Again, remember that the first number, or even your numerator, would, be, would always go under the bus stop. So please remember your first number always goes under the bus stop. And if you're working with a fraction, the numerator would go under the bus stop. And now we need to find out how many times seven goes into 2,184. So we know that seven doesn't go into two. 
but seven does go into 21 three times. We then know that seven goes into eight once with a remainder of one. And we can put the one next to the four in front of the four. And then seven goes into 14 twice. And there we have it, 312 as our answer. Marvelous. Let's now go for question five. So it calculates how much bigger three and a quarter is then one three quarters, writing your answer as a decimal. So the first thing we're going to do is convert our fraction into a decimal. So we'll take three, one over four, and that gives us 3.25. We will then have one three over four, which will give us 1.75. And then we can subtract it as they are looking to find out how much bigger one is from the other. So we know five take away five is zero, but we can't do two take away seven. So we can borrow from the three, which gives us two and one. So 12 take away seven gives us five and two take away one is two. And two take away one is one. And don't forget your decimal. And that's our answer, 1.5. So again, if we get a question similar to this, we take a two-step method approach where we convert it into the right metric unit which in this case is your, where we convert it into the right unit, which again was our decimal, and then we subtract it. Okay, question number six. Now we need to fill in the missing numbers of these sequences. So let's quickly identify what, it, what the sequence is, which in this case is your plus three. So we know it's going to be 26 and 29. And then, for the second question, we can see that it's going to be a minus 0 0.75 for each section here. So again, we have 11.75 take away 0 0.75, which gives us 11. And then if we do the same, that gives us 10.25. So again, you can see we are just subtracting 0.75, and there we are. Marvelous. Okay, question seven. Now, don't forget, you can pause the video at any time, attempt the question, and then press play for, for you to then see the answers. Okay, so work out a quarter of 48. Well, there's a two-step process here, and that is simply to always divide by a denominator and times by a numerator. So we have 48 divided by 4, which gives us 12. Because the numerator is 1, we know that the answer is still going to be 12. But again, if the numerator was different, you would then have 12 times whatever the numerator is, and then you would get your answer. And then for part B, it states, work out a half of a third of a quarter of 48. So the first thing I'm going to do is find out a quarter of 48, which we found was 12. I'm then going to find out a third of this answer. So a third of 12, that is 12 divided by three, which gives us four. So now I know that's four. And then I get a half of four. So again, if I get a half of four, we know we can just do four divided by two, which gives us two. And that is our answer. So I hope you can see how I've broken this question down into three easy steps. I found a quarter of a 48 first. I then found a third of 12, which was our answer. And then a half of four, which was our answer to the previous step. And that they allowed me to work out our answer. Keep up the great work and let's go to the next question. So draw the reflection of this triangle in the mirror line shown. So what we need to do here now is find out the distance that this shape is from the mirror line and then replicate that on the other side. So the first thing I would do is find out the distance from one of the points. So I've chosen this point here, and you can see we have to cross one entire square and then a half. So you can say 1.5. And I'll do the same here, a half and then an entire square. And then I'll put my dot there. So you can now see that is the same distance. We then need to count the number of squares which we have on the height, which is one, two, three, four, five, and six. So I'm gonna now go across by six spaces. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's my new point. And then how many squares I'm going to go across? 
which is again going to be one, two, and three. So I'll go down by three. And then I now need to join this up right away with my first point. And there we are. So now we can go ahead and erase this divider here. And we are good to go. And that there is your question completed. I hope that was clear. Let's now move over to question nine. So the pie chart below represents data collected in a survey by a PE teacher about the favorite sports of a sample of school children. Now write down the fraction of the school children who liked tennis, giving your answer in its lowest form. So the first thing we're going to do is find out the value of our tennis. And we can see that it's going to be 45 degrees out of 360 degrees because the total degrees in a circle, because the total degrees in a circle adds up to 360 degrees. So that gives us 45 over 360 degrees. But they now want our answer in the lowest form. So again, we need to find one common divisor. So if we divide both sides by nine, we get five over 40. And then if we go ahead and divide that again by five, we get one over eight, and that is our answer. Let's now go to part B. A total of 240 children were asked to complete the survey. So now we know the amount that they've given us. And they want to calculate how many of the children preferred cricket. So now if we take a look at cricket, we can see it was 60 degrees. So we can simply write down 60 over 360. And if we simplify this, we can cross out a zero and have six over 36 or one over six. And what I've done is I've simply divided both sides by 10 and then divided both sides by six. So now what am I going to do with one sixth? Well, I'm going to go ahead and multiply this out by 240 children. And that then will give me the total amount of children that preferred cricket. So that's my step one. Now for my step two, let's have one over six times 240. And if you remember my two-step method, you divide by the denominator and then times by the numerator. So 240 divided by six gives us 40. And if you times it by the numerator, it remains as 40. And that is our answer. So I hope that was clear. Let's go for part C. So let's estimate how many children would say their favorite sport was football out of the whole school of 1,200 pupils. So now let's go ahead and work out the degrees in terms of football. We know the total is 360 degrees, so we simply need to go ahead and subtract everything from 360. So we know rugby is 90, tennis is 45, other is 30, and cricket is 60. If we go ahead and add that all up, that gives us 225. And if we subtract that from 360, that gives us 135. So now we know that football is 135 degrees. So all in all, we have 135 over 360 degrees. Once again, because the total amount of degrees in a circle totals 360 degrees. We can then go ahead and simplify this by dividing both sides by 45. And that there gives us three over eight. And then we are going to go ahead and have three of eight times by 1,200. So again, step one, 1,200 divided by eight, which then gives you 150. And step two, we'll go ahead and take 150 and times that by three, which gives us 450. And that is our answer. So I hope that question was clear. Once again, feel free to pause the video, attempt the question again to see if you get the same answer. So let's go ahead and dive into question 10. So I buy six bags of chocolate coins from a shop and count the number of coins in each bag. The quantities were as follows. 
8, 7, 11, 6, 9, and 7. Now write down the mode of the quantities. So the first thing we're going to do is order the numbers and then write down the one that is most common. So we have 6, we have 7, we have 7 again, we have 8, 9, and 11. And now we can see we have two number 7s and that is our mode. So mode stands for most common. And then part B asks us to work out the mean of the number of chocolate coins. So again, if you remember how to calculate the average, we have to add up all of the numbers and divide them by how many there are. So we've added them up, we divide them by 6, which means we'll have 48 over 6, which gives us 8. So again, we take the sum and then we take the division and we get our answer. And then finally, it states work out the range of the quantities in the six bags. So we know range is your largest takeaway, the smallest, where our largest is 11 and smallest is 6. So if we calculate the subtraction, we will get 5 and that is our answer. So I hope you're able to see how I'm breaking these questions up. You want to make sure that you are concise and at the same time providing a clear explanation to get those marks. Take a look at 10b, for example. It's a three mark question. You can see that's one mark for the sum, the second mark for the division, and the third and final mark for the answer. So it's absolutely pertinent that you go through each question concisely. And that then brings us to the end of our video. So I hope this video was useful. And I hope you're now more comfortable in terms of attempting the multi-step problems that we've gone through today. Just to reiterate once more, the entrance assessment for candidates applying to join year seven for 11 plus consists of the cognitive abilities test, which is your CAT4 test and the English and mathematics papers. If you want more information, feel free to contact me below at any given time to arrange a consultation or further lessons. Thank you very much and have a great day.